Hey, this is Matt once again. This is a request for Glamo. Thank you so much. Um, for those interested requesting pretty much any type of videos or topics, randomness, out of the blueness, uh, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. These will be commentary, topic, reaction, re-review, review, ranking, randomness, whatever. But this is for, uh, for some reason, this guy a trilogy. Fear Footage 2, The Curse of the Tape from 2020. Yes, somehow this got a sequel and probably one of the most unknown trilogies ever. <laughs> and I would say maybe this was a little bit better than the first one only because at least it was one story instead of the anthology take. So at least there's a little bit more room to breathe and at least... They try to go a little bit of a meta, I don't know if you call it meta, but they, they try to go a little bit more of an interesting story compared to the first one, but it's still littered with not the best acting, ultra low budget, uh, typical things you found in plenty of other found footage movies, uh, characters doing idiotic stupid things. And another typical found footage type of ending. Which yes there are a lot of found footage films. I mean not a whole lot. But there's some that went off the beaten path in terms of ending. I mentioned before there's this one for free on YouTube called Spiral Drive. And then the acting's not the best. But it was a more interesting story. And the ending was not typical in Spiral Drive. There's as above so below. There's. Uh, Butterfly Kisses, there's Afflicted, which was a nice take on a vampire story. Uh, Chronicle. Uh, what was that? The Tunnel. I mean, there are some out there. And if you want to do it, you got to do it well, like the Blair Witch Project from 1999. So anyway, this one... When I said it has a, at least a little bit more of an interesting story... Daniel, the guy in the first movie, who was in the third story, where he was the drug guy, or he used to be a drug guy, druggy, who heard noises in the woods, called his girlfriend, girlfriend said, oh, you're back on drugs again. It led to him going to the woods, into this place where a preacher attacked and killed him. Well, this is a different Daniel. Who's watching the movie Fear Footage and going, wait a minute, that's not me. How the hell did I get in this movie? And then he finds another guy who's in the second story, the cult who was shooting people and they're in the tunnels with all the graffiti on the wall. One of the guys named James who was in the second story. And he's like, yeah, you're in this too. And what's going on here? And at least this setup, this setup is more interesting. It just sadly, whether because of the, the script or the budget or both, it's an interesting setup that just could not go into a great fruition in its completion. Because he, meet, he meets with the guy James, as well as another guy who was in it, Alex. Alex says, fuck this, I'm not doing it. James says, okay, let, let's see. They both go to the town that this tape supposedly took place this cabin and then they just wander around talk to people in town and there's a couple weird things like they go in the cabin and I find it funny that in the cabin who knows how long that cabin's been used but there's like a ton of shit in the fridge I mean I know they brought a couple things but when like the guys open the fridge and there's like mustard and mayonnaise and all this stuff in the fridge i'm like i wonder how long that's been in there like i mean if this is a cabin that no one rarely visits or rents that fridge must be smelling like death <laughs> like a, a dead animal fucked a dead another dead animal there you go zombie animal fucking that'll be the next trauma movie if they haven't done it yet but yeah, I just found funny. It was observation. He was putting stuff in the fridge, but it's like the whole fridge on the side is already stacked. 
I'm like, well, how long that stuff been in there? Has someone just been in there? Didn't seem like it was. So they talked to people in town. And then there's this weird thing where the town maybe knows what's going on. or But they're keeping a secret. And you never find out what the deal is with that. Even the third one. Yes, there's a third one. Because the third one is just a guy goes to a town and the whole town is a ghost town. Everyone vanished. How everyone vanished? How over 260 people vanished? And there's not a fucking nationwide emergency on it? Hey. What do I know? But I guess apparently all this stuff built up about how it's a secret and... Like, they try to contact the wife of the deputy from the first film. She, She's like, what do you guys want? Okay, I'll meet you. And instead of the... That's another thing. The Daniel guy, who I think is played by the director. I could be wrong. His character comes off as a fucking idiot and a moron and becomes unlikable because of that. Because he keeps doing the dumbest shit. For example, he keeps calling people, he keeps saying, Do you know about the tape? Do you know about the tape? I'm like, dude... They're gonna listen and go, What the fuck are you talking about, dude? What are you talking about? Instead of going... You just say, hey, I'm a... Lie! Make say, hey, I'm a reporter, and I want to... Like, bullshit your way to meeting him. Or meeting her. Or meeting them. Or when you talk to the, hus- the the deputy's wife. You know what you do? You say I'm a reporter. And uh, we were able to find footage of your husband. Your husband had a body cam. We have this footage. And you show her the fucking movie. We found footage of your husband. Don't go. Do you know about this tape? That your husband watched? Do you know about this tape your husband watched? She she doesn't know what the fuck you're talking about, dude. Why not just go with, Hey, we found footage of your husband. He had a body cam. The body cam thing was missing, but we're, we were able to find it. But why didn't you do that? And people go, Well, maybe she already saw the footage. Well, then wouldn't that kind of tell you, instead of the the lady going, oh, they didn't tell me nothing. But wouldn't you, instead of just nonchalantly going, it seems like something weird's going on. Uh, if you saw the footage, yeah, if you saw your husband walk around a house that kept repeating and there's monsters and it seemed like he's dead. Yeah, I think there'd be something more of a reaction than, it seems like there's something weird going on. They're not telling me anything. But she did say, uh, I don't even know what happened to him. I don't think I want to know. So it seemed like they, she had not seen that footage. She would just, just tell her. What the fuck, dude? And also, Daniel keeps saying, he keeps seeing creepy, well, to him, creepy stuff. To me, I'm like, strange things in the cabin, trying to play a piano, or something that attacked him in the pool. And he never tells the other guy, James, anything. There's even a point that he goes to a house in the middle of a cemetery. And there's missing posters of him and James. And there's hooded guys from the tapes. And then when he gets back to the car after running off, J- you know, James says, what happened? And what does Daniel say? Nothing. I didn't see nothing. <laughs> what? Oh, well, I don't want to scare him so that he runs off. What? Isn't the whole point is you two are investigating shit? I can. Do do people not realize that you film footage? You just show people what you filmed. Why does no one get that idea? We filmed it. Now let's show the other person what we filmed. Even uh, when uh, before that, there's a scene where. James, the other guy is outside. Daniel's gone inside the cabin to sleep. James keeps hearing this creepy voice saying his name. He hears kids crying, which I that was done better in 
Blair Witch Project. Then this bid voice yells because it does that same cheap jump steer of it's quiet. Then a loud sound or a loud shout or a loud boom. And then Daniel finds him in a corner. Speaking of Blair Witch Project. It's not Mike. Mike! Mike! No, it's... Uh, James saying, we can't leave, we can't leave. Again, go back and watch... Then Daniel's like, what happened, dude? What happened, man? What's going on? What happened? Again, you have a video camera. You have a laptop. Go back into the footage and watch it so you could see with your eyes what happened. You would see that you... You would hear that he heard voices and that he did this and he saw this and this happened. You And then you just show James. Why is it that nobody in this fucking film or any of these three films realizes that this is a thing to do? You can do it. Especially in the second film, you have a laptop that you brought with you. And the whole point is to solve this mystery. Again, you're asking what happened. You look at the camera. Oh, let's rewind. Let's see what this is. There's power in the... F if the guy has a fucking laptop and the fridge light is on, they obviously, ha obviously have power. Oh, they don't have a TV. Camera... Hook the fucking camera to your laptop and see what was on. This is 2020, not fucking 20... 2000. Tell James, you fuckhead. P Both of you fuckhead characters looked at the fucking camera. And this is the shit I hone in on because the movie, just like the first one and just like the third one, is not scary. Cheap jump stairs mean nothing to me because they're cheap. They're cheap. Hell, even if you're into that, you could go watch fucking, I don't know, Grave Encounters. If you want a found footage film that does that, which I would put that above this, you could go watch Grave Encounters. If, if that's what you're really into. Honestly. Why, if you don't rent a movie, why not rent Grave Encounters instead of this? And I, like, Grave Encounters, I thought was okay. I didn't even love it, but that was okay. I did definitely put it above this. Sally, I would even put probably Grave Encounters 2, which I wasn't really a fan of, above any of these three fear footage movies. How does it compare to the VHS? The first VHS I still maintain is one of the worst anthologies I've ever seen. VHS, not everybody likes VHS 2, but I liked it. VHS Viral sucked, but I like Bone Storm, so that puts it above these. And the fourth VHS, I like the one with the Doom, the Lady Cyborg, kind of like Doom video game. At least that has one segment I enjoy, so I put that over any of these three. The Dark Tapes, that's another found footage horror film. <sighs> Anthology. I probably would say Dark Tapes might be worse. That might be a bit worse still. But anyway, the... Again, they just... They look around, They like I said, they talk to people, a couple weird things happen. I mentioned, you know, the, the James character heard a creepy voice saying his name, got into a trance, and then it's like, oh yeah, when I was a kid I used to sleepwalk. Then... Uh, Daniel sees someone playing a piano, but it's not James, it's someone else. But then he doesn't tell James anything. And then, go to the cemetery. There's a house in the middle of the cemetery. The hooded guy's from the first movie. He doesn't tell James anything. Again, something attacks down in the pool. He doesn't tell James anything. And then finally... They see the top, I guess, from the first movie. Now it is this monster attached to them. And then completely disappears. And then 
uh, James is like, I want to get the fuck out of here. And Daniel's like, okay. Well, he, he's okay first. But then James like, no, I want to get the fuck. I'm like, okay, great. Finally, we have someone saying an amount of common sense. And then since the guy's glasses are gone, Daniel's like, okay, fine, I'll drive. But then James fell asleep and Daniel, he still got his head up his ass, the character, goes off, finds this house that was in the first movie and 3 a.m. it appears. James is like, what the fuck? Give me my fuck. Give me the fucking keys. I want to leave. Daniel's like, no, 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 no. Goes to the house. In the house, he sees the clown and the figures from the first movie. And then there's James in a trance walking around. Daniel gets the tape, jumps out the window. Something grabs him. Camera goes to the ground. And a movie. Again, I would say I maybe put this above the first only because neither is scary. I guess people would prefer the first because of an anthology segment, anthology format, but at least because it's one story. I can't even say they develop characters, it's just at least there's a bit of a build up. Again, a bit of what could be an interesting idea of you saw yourself on a tape, but that wasn't you, and it has parts of you, but then it's parts that wasn't you, and it's it's even weirder because it's not like the events in the tape become what happens in real life. So it's real. Did the whatever the twilight zone bermuda triangle where the fuck this town is this evil is they literally just make up a movie to get people to come here uh, does that mean if you watch the first one even within the movie it's still fake people doing fake stuff because the evil made it all up <laughs> If that's the case, what about the kid with the clown and the balloons? It's weird that of the three stories, only two characters from two of them appeared. I like the kid or the, the mom from the first one ever appeared again. And not even in the third one. So that seems even more of a weird thing. Like, there's no explanation, by the way. I didn't, there's even no explanation of anything. Of any terms of the mystery. Just like, oh yeah, this random reference of this one person killed himself. And maybe this one person killed himself near this cabin. But that still doesn't explain what was up with the clown. What was up... You don't even... like What's up with the hooded guys? Uh, who are the hooded guys? How come they got guns? Uh, why are people in the town hiding this? If they know what's going on, why don't they get the fuck out of town? And the third film doesn't really explain that anyway. So I, it's weird that you take three films as if you're building mythology, but you still explain jazz shit. I, th I That's a bit weird to me as well. I don't get that. And again, it ends the typical way, and the acting's not the best. And it's, Again, unless you're hardcore found footage aficionado, I don't see what the point is of these of these movies. I mean, there are found footage films I like. I've mentioned plenty of times before. Savage Land, Butterfly Kisses, Blair Witch Project from 1999, The Tunnel, Afflicted, As Above, So Below. I didn't know uh, this one for free that, again, it was okay, called Spiral Drive. I liked it for what it was, for something for free on YouTube. I didn't, this is stuff that you have to pay for $5 if you want to rent it on Amazon. And Spiral Drive, like I think that's a better one because it has a more interesting story. And that and a better ending in my opinion. And that uh I don't know. What's well, not scary. Well, I don't think these movies are scary either. 
Spiral Drive at least had a little bit of a sense of humor. An interesting take on a story. I don't find many of these movies scary. Maybe that's where I'm in the difference. Like the first film, this one, the third one, I didn't find any of these scary. And the only amount of scares, they try to do the typical jump steer with the monsters like... <sighs> So I guess if, if you get scared of a monster going, <laughs> this is your movie. Other than that, I don't know what to tell you. There's potential at the beginning, but the story then goes nowhere. You don't really find out anything. Just the places they go to doesn't really tell much of anything. Other than here's a new location, the cabin, and then someone who died there. But still they're displaying like the the rest of the stuff other than people who are on the tape can't leave or people who are who are already on the tape are already dead okay I mean this is all some a purgatory it, nothing's really that fleshed out but I mean, what do I know but with that said, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.